Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now in this video I'll be showing you how to install Why You Know Host. Now Why You Know Host is a pretty much your single one-stop shop for hosting a whole bunch of applications on the on one server. Now this is ideal for things like a Raspberry Pi um, and this is all supported on a Raspberry Pi as well and that's the install I'll be doing. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through the entire install step and you can just follow me along as I go through it um, and I'm also going to just give you a quick demo now of what you can expect of what we're installing. So I'm on their main front page here uh, and they kind of have like little quirky things here like go host yourself. So if you click the what, it will take you down to their kind of front page. And now if we want to just kind of get a feel for what to expect, we can click try it and they have a little demo. And then this is kind of the demo page and this is what you can kind of expect. So you can give people like user accounts or, you know, and then that they can access directly into like the user panel that they can kind of see all your apps that you are hosting. Now, keep in mind as well that you could access the web panel on one IP address, but all of your apps can be hosted on their own, um, sorry, domains. Uh, they can be hosted on their own domains as well. So that you, you don't have to access this um, portal to access your apps. They can still be hosted, but this is like your one single pane of glass for all your apps as well. So you see there's like a WordPress one here. If we click here, it takes us to a WordPress blog, right? Um, and let me just kind of show you the domain name. So you can see here that it's got like demo you know host .org, uh, and it takes you to the blog uh, and all bunch of cool stuff like that, right? So I'm gonna show you how to get this all set up. Uh, so what we're going to do is if we click get started, you can see here that it supports a whole bunch of servers. You can even set it up on like a virtual box or something like that, but I'm going to be installing it on the Raspberry Pi. So we'll click Raspberry Pi. And if we scroll down, we can say, we can see that this supports the two, three or and four, which is great. Uh, you just need the basics that you genuinely already have I guess just make sure you have at least a 16 gigabyte uh, SD card, which is fine. And uh, make sure that you are connected via, via Ethernet cable. And then you can download the image here. So that's essentially where I'm at. I have just installed it on my SD card now. Um, and I'm essentially going to follow the steps from here on out so you can see. So essentially all they're going to tell you to do is flash the image onto an SD card and then you can connect to it on this port here. So I'm going to quickly go plug the SD card into my Raspberry Pi, power it up, and I'll see you when we try to connect to this URL. Now while that's booting up, I'll just quickly cover some of the stuff that it says here. So you can connect to it on the whyyouknowhost.local URL, but if for some weird reason you can't connect to it, you can just connect to it directly from its IP address. Now you might be asking, well how do i know it's ip address when i can't even connect to it right uh you can normally see it in your router settings uh, and see what devices are connected to your router that's a good way to find the ip address i've already kind of pre-tested this so i know that i can actually connect to it from the domain name that's here so we'll connect to it on that so i've got the url in the top here as you can see so now essentially i'm going to test to see if my raspberry pi is all ready for me to click enter and see if i can connect to it and it looks like we've hit it which is good so let's go full screen, zoom in a bit. And it says here, congratulations, you know host has, a why you know host has been successfully installed. And now we can just go begin. Now here you can see it says, this is the first domain name linked to your why you know host server, but also the one which will be used by your server's users to access authentication portal. So accordingly, it will be visible by everyone. So choose it carefully. So if you already have a domain name, you can click here. Now I do have heaps of domain names, but in terms of for this video, you know, DNS propagation is totally gonna take me for ages to actually show you all of this working so I'm just gonna say I don't have a domain name and we'll follow that process so if I click here now it actually lets me create my own sort of domain name uh, that uh, why you know host is going to provide for me which is awesome right so let's just call this one tech docs right so tech docs dot no host dot me and I'll hit next now I need to give this a strong password uh, so I'll quickly enter in my password cool so I've entered in my password and I'm gonna hit go and it says here you're about to launch the post installation process on the domain techdocs.nohost.me it may take a few minutes do not interrupt the operation yep I'm okay with that now we see a little pac-man going across the screen and I guess we just sit back and wait right now keep in mind this is all running on a Raspberry Pi uh, 4 I believe is what I'm currently using and you can see in the top left there all the kind of stuff that it's doing at the moment which is cool awesome so we can now see that it says in the top left installation is complete the post install completed to finalize the setup please consider adding a first user uh, running through a diagnostic test um, and also just reading the documentation now i've found that it doesn't seem to redirect me automatically so what i normally have to do is kind of just refresh it by pressing f5 and then it takes me back to this page so now we enter in that uh, admin password we made in the previous screen and then we hit login, we've logged in. So we essentially now have a why you know host up and running, but there's a few post deployment steps that we should definitely be doing. So as I said, you wanna run the diagnostics first. So what we'll do is run the initial diagnostics tool. 
and this will see if we've got any things that aren't connected properly now when you first run this you will probably see that you don't have a lot of ports and stuff open so this actually requires a fair few ports to be port forwarded on your router uh, that's um, that your Raspberry Pi is running on so it's looking at your Raspberry Pi so you need to open up those ports right so what we've got here is we've got a few ones here so um, as you can see we've got a few DNS things but we've just made this so you kind of want to give it a few but uh, a while for it to propagate right now the ports exposure you will see that this here is everything's good but your one will probably have a big list of things you need to port forward. So in that list, make sure you just port forward those, rerun the test and you should be all good. Now, just because these are generally DNS is always a pain uh, and takes a while for everything to kind of kick into gear. Uh, what we can do is we'll go back and now let's create that user that we had to do. So we'll go users, we'll add a new user. I'm gonna add me and I'm happy with that. So let's hit save. Oh, I've got a uppercase in the username. So let's just remove that and hit save. There we go. I now have a user. That's great. And now let's have a check on the domains. So if we go into domains and click in the tech docs, no host.me, we can see that we can manage the DNS configuration and the SSL certificate in here. So if we go into SSL certificate, you can see that once our DNS is all kicked in properly, we'll be able to install our Let's Encrypt certificate. Uh, which is awesome uh, that will handle all of that um, otherwise while that's all waiting we can regenerate a self-signed certificate like i said when you're making these sort of videos uh dns can really halt all the what you can actually expect to see uh, but it shouldn't prevent us from actually demoing the applications and stuff so the great thing about this is the whole one-stop shop for applications right so if i click in applications and if we click install now we can install some apps so let's say uh we go publishing well what do we want look at all this stuff that we can choose from uh uh, let's see if WordPress, yep, let's give WordPress a try, eh? So if I hit install, we can see here, oh yep, we'll host it on this domain name, uh, techdocs.nohost.me, be on the blog. Uh, we'll use that user that we just made as the admin for it. Uh, and that all looks good for me. So let's hit install. And now you can see up here in the top left that uh, WordPress is now being installed. So we just essentially sit back and wait for it to be finished. Now while that's installing, what we can do is if we could jump over to here, which is the uh, SSO uh, link in it, this is where your general users would log in. So now let's just try off that user we made. So it's just Nick and hit login. See, now we can see that we can see that app here now, right? It is currently installing, so I highly doubt me clicking it will work. But this is, as you start installing, they all kind of just come here and you've got like that single pane of glass for all your apps and i think that's awesome even if you just want to keep like uh you don't want to set like actually publicly expose this stuff you can still have like an awesome internal intranet right we have you know your internal wordpress you have like your documents your book stack all of this cool stuff that you can just host on this and I, I think that's a big use case especially for me sometimes i don't want to have all my stuff publicly accessible one of the stuff i want to self-host is kind of just for me um and yeah and this is perfect for it right but again in saying that it's also perfect for public making everything publicly accessible right so yeah this is great so i'm just going to log out here and we'll wait for that wordpress install to finish so just come back and we can still see that uh, wordpress is still installing so we'll just sit back and we'll give it a bit more Awesome, we can now see that at the top installation has been completed. So in theory, we should now have a up and running WordPress server. Um, so once this is finished with its little Pac-Man, we'll give it a shot. Now it's still got its little Pac-Man going, but I'm just gonna try hit that uh, URL directly now. So the URL was uh, techdocs.nohost.me and it was slash blog. So if I hit enter and look at that, we have our WordPress blog all set up and running. Um, and then that's essentially it with all the other applications as well. So now we're back on the home screen. We've seen that our blog is all up and running just like that. So now if we come back into applications, we can see we now have a WordPress all up and running. Now, the great thing is, say once we get a domain, like our own domain configured and stuff like that, you can actually just come in here, click change URL, and once you've configured your domain name and uh, why you know host, you can just reassign it. And again, you come into domains and then you can just actually add a domain here. And I already have a domain name and you can add it in here and slowly switch everything from being, you know, internally hosted and then start exposing your stuff that way. So yeah, that's kind of it really. It's so if we come back in the applications, I'll give you another quick view of kind of the apps and then yeah, that's really how easy it is to install. Uh, so let's just have a, uh, another quick look at maybe some Office stuff. Um, as you can see here, these are nice open source uh, productivity sort of tools um, that you've got here. You've got your typical only Office. 
and whatnot. So again, let's come back and let's just have another look at some chat stuff, some communication. Uh, these are some really good ones that uh, a lot of people love using and especially mumble and stuff like that, that you can just click install and away you go. And as you can see here, it does kind of uh, give you a bit of a, a little warning, you know, if stuff isn't maintained anymore. Um, and that's great. You don't really want to install things if they're no longer being maintained. Uh, there's some games. So let's see what's in games. Um, these just look like some generic kind of <laughs> open source games, but all good. And then you've got some uh, social media, some reading. Let's jump into the reading stuff real quick. Uh, you, you've got your RSS um, stuff in your Wallabag here, which is great. A lot of people love Wallabag. Um, you can just, yeah, again, it's just a one-stop. I, I want Wallabag. Come here, click install. Yep, cool. Install, please. And now we have Wallabag installing. This is the fantastic uh, a tool I think for anyone who is looking for a that kind of one-stop shop you know install one operating system away you go they don't want to deal with you know docker containers and they don't want to deal with you know all these different installs uh, and like different servers and stuff you can just have that one server we've got the Raspberry Pi running why you know host you know no more problems just install 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 um, and again I don't know if I can go back now because it's installing, but at the bottom of every page, you can, if it's something's not listed, but there's something on GitHub, you can just paste the GitHub link in. And uh, technically, if it's that uh, way of installation and all the files are in that repository, you can install it that way as well. So yeah, um, if you're interested in seeing a more of a deep dive into all like uh, certain specifics around why you know host, please let me know. Um, but for now, this was just your let's install video, um, giving you a bit of an overview and a bit of insights into it. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video um, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers. Bye.